doing a little experimenting today with KD couplings. I actually put them on yesterday and I'm, I'm running it and testing it to see how the rake will perform. Well, it didn't perform well there because it just disconnected. I know what happened. I'll show you. The problem is that the uh, locomotive, the coupling on it, is just a tad higher than the one on the wagon. You probably can't see that, but it's about about a millimeter or so higher than the uh, the one on the locomotive. So that would mean that I would have to lower the one on the locomotive somehow. Not sure just exactly how I do that. I'm sure there's a way. Let's give it another spin around and see how it does this time. It's been running pretty well for a while now. I don't know if you noticed it, but one of these has a tension lock coupling on it, just for comparison's sake. And what happens is that uh, it's a little further apart than the ones that have KD couplings on them. So the KD couplings are tighter. I guess you probably want to see something instead of looking at the track. through the platforms to the station. There it goes. All seems to be well. Now interestingly the locomotive came with fake um, knuckle couplings and the low wagons actually had an option for KD style couplings but they were too high to mate up with the uh, NIM the 362's that uh, are on the rest of the train so I had to use uh, they also they're, they're kind of dual they have NIM pockets and uh, the ability to actually mount a... It did fine this time. Oh, you probably want to see. Sorry about that. Get to talking, you know. Now, you can see that the... Uh, oh, hey, wait a minute. Let's go ahead and measure... Measure the distance here. And that's... Uh, It's about 13 millimeters. Now the uh Pitching lock couplings are coming into view. And that is about 23, 24 millimeters apart. 23 millimeters apart. So, 7 versus 13. So it's almost half as, half as far apart with the KD couplings. I don't know if, if you know much about these things or not, but let's see if I can get this little rascal loose. It goes right into the NIM pocket. 
I'll get one. This is what I'm using. It's automatic. And if you want to release it, you just have to put a magnet on it and pull that over a little ways and it'll release. So you can do it automatically if you want to. But this guy is mounted. in there. Now, Katie Couplings, the, the, the list of available variations just goes on and on and on. In fact, there are four variations of the 362. Um, and the difference is, the difference is the length of the shank. In other words, this piece gets shorter. These are relatively long ones and you can get quite short ones. Not sure what that would be for. Now, a couple of other things while we're on the subject. This wagon apparently was designed for the European market as well as the uh, UK market because it's possible let's see how can I show you that maybe like this under here there's a screw and that's the, uh, the what they call the gearbox I guess for the Katie coupling but it's got the typical ring and whiskers that go inside this box. Take that screw off and put it in there. You have to take the truck off, by the way, to do it. Whoops. I accidentally touched the throttle with my, uh, with my waving hand here. But, um, so th it comes with both. It comes with a tension lock coupler that can go in this NIM pocket, and that's a dual NIM pocket. The crazy thing is, it's it's a dovetail with a uh, a NIM socket in it. I can't get that out of there right now. I've never seen these before, but it's a it's a. Uh, A NIM socket but it's also a dovetail and when you take the truck off then you can push that dovetail out and uh, I guess put another dovetail coupling in there if you wanted to or replace it I'm not sure what they uh, what they're up to exactly but in fact, I, I think that couplings are are crazy. I think there needs to be some standardization, to tell you the truth. They have couplings every crazy combination you can imagine. I'll be right back while I get this coupling back in the pocket. There. By the way, the, these are beautifully detailed underneath. Really stunning detail with rods running back and forth and air tanks and air valves on the side. It's really amazing. It's amazing considering that no one ever sees that. Except the guy that buys it and can lift it up and play around with it.
I've got to put weight. I've got to put weight in these uh, short-sided wagons because they're just too light, at least for my layout. It. Uh, Well, they just they just can't stay on the track. They they lift up. I'm gonna run this around one more time. See if it stays together. Throttle set about right there. These trucks on these wagons, I believe, could be HO scale wagons. Let's see if we can zoom in there a little bit. Couplings just drive me crazy. All these different heights and styles. Let's go upstairs and uh, and lay a few out and talk about them a little bit. Here's a few examples of various couplings that I could grab really quick. I think there are considerably more, but I don't have them at hand. Pieces and parts. Okay, so we've got the what I call the, in, in derision, I call these Big D or Dallas couplings. And it's truly in derision. They're ugly. But I have to admit that on HSTs, they are very, very reliable. And then, of course, there's the smaller version. Depending on how tight your corners are, they may or may not play together. Then there's this crazy little thing. Where is it? Well, anyway, it fits together. And then you have that coupling. And then, uh, of course, you've got your your uh, dovetail. But I don't know if you can see this or not. But these two are not exactly the same size. So obviously, it's two different manufacturers. They're not exactly the same size. And that really drives you crazy. Then you've got your, uh, your crankshaft. This one's missing its uh, hook. And your straight shaft. And this is all because different manufacturers want to try to keep the other guy from hooking up to him successfully. Sometimes when I put a new rake on my uh, on my track with on Farland with all the inclines and picadillos on it, I sometimes can work for half an hour getting the coupling straightened out on it so that it'll run smooth round and round because that's the easiest way to shoot these things. Um, you know, when you're sitting there waiting for it to come by, you might as well just let it go in loops instead of trying to back it up because that doesn't really work very well. Now here's an interesting one. I discovered this.
I was looking for something that would help me uh, stay engaged when I'm going up and down hills. See if I can find another one. Yeah, here we go. But these couple in and they really locked they locked nicely. nicely. And these are uh, European, I think. They are Electrotren. What the package says is uh, alternative coupling for a closed, closer coupling between coaches, if preferred. Well, another advantage they have is they don't let go when it, when your coaches are bouncing around over poorly laid track and going up hills and down hills and stuff. They hold on really well, quite amazingly, actually. Well, the uh, of course the KD couplings they come in every variety too, and uh, here's the package for the for the shorter, whatever this is called, this end is shorter on this version, on the 18, than it is on the 20. It doesn't really show it in the picture very well, but it's, uh, it's longer. So that's the extent of my uh, complaints for today. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again soon. In the meantime, I'm going to go down and continue to experiment with these new KD couplings and try to understand them and learn them. Bye for now.